Uh, this is the streetcar bodies thing, which I'm now calling afterlife for old streetcars. And once again, you know, I'm, I'm presenting these again because I wanted to get up on YouTube. So, um, of course, you have the horse cars being replaced by the electric cars. And so here is one being used as a waiting shelter. And I think this is at the end of the Bryant Avenue line at 46th Street when there wasn't anything out there. Kind of a good uh, example of how they built these lines ahead of uh, development. I mean, it says Bryant on it, so you would think that's what it is. Uh, here's another one being used as a waiting shelter, a playhouse, not exactly sure what. And Twin City Lines needed a couple of sheds on the over by the track department, I think to go and put ballast in or something. And so they just took a couple old ones and took the trucks <laughs> off and did that to them. Uh, the trolley pole probably wasn't very useful anymore. That body looks like it's in really good shape. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. Well, you know, it had probably been overhauled five years ago or something. So oh. I wonder if the pole is uh, from a car, some work work car <clears throat> right on the other side, because I can see some dark shape in the back there. It's possible. Uh, that might be the crane, the track, uh, the rail crane over there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So here's the ad, um, actual photo of a streetcar. And they say, this is what has been actually done, but I don't believe them. Uh, I think, I think that they've drawn all this stuff in, but terms as low as $5 a week. Yeah, the white picket fence. And so uh, this this one was actually a newspaper photo of a story. You can see it says Sausalito, California. And this is a car they bought in the 1930s. This was one of the cars that was one of, one of the wood frame cars that was retired in the 30s. And so they decided to go and go to California in it. Really? So here's a much more typical example um, of what they would do. They would go and put it on this dolly and deliver it to you. And this is car 1268 that uh, went to Robbinsdale to the churchyard to be used as a play uh, a playhouse uh, for the kids at the Catholic school. And that's because the the priest at the church was a trolley fan. How appropriate it says not in service. <laughs> yeah. Service services were at nine and uh, ten thirty on Sunday. <laughs> this, is this, inter this is interesting. Garage four F. I have not seen that sign before. Did they leave all the seats and everything else inside? Yes, they did. They did. Yeah, they didn't go to the. They didn't go to the trouble of taking the seats out. Bill Graham, you probably remember this thing up there. Yeah, I do. And I was told by Byron Olson <clears throat> that the gates on that car are the ones that we got and are now on 1239. Really? Is that where Ooh. they came from? Yeah. Oh, they were gonna, the, the Padre out in <clears throat> Robbinsdale was going to chunk this car out. It was getting pretty sad. And Barney knew that there were gates on it. And he went out there with, I don't know, maybe Ray Benson and took the gates off, and they sat in our barn at Linden Hills for years and years. And finally, when Carl Jones found the car body of 1239, and we decided we were going to make a gate car out of it, those were the gates. And I'll be darned. I didn't off, know that. They came off Aaron? The car. Yeah. <clears throat> Aaron, did we ever get this image to Dan Odegaard? Um, no. I'm not aware that he knows about he, it. He's the he's the president of the 1268 fan club. There's no question about it. It reminds him of his callow youth. Oh, Many okay. Well, I, I even have movie footage that the, the priest took uh, of them bringing the car in and the kids playing in the car. If you get a chance, you might drop him an email and just see, if, see uh, how serious he is about acquiring this stuff because he's um, he's pretty wrapped up in it. Okay, thank you. I, I will do that. 
Good. Here's another one going out. And then of course they got used for all sorts of things. Um, on the Railway Preservation News uh, website, um, there is a, there's a little thread going right now. You know, we tend to call a, a car body like this a chicken coop. And someone raised the point, has anyone actually seen a picture of a railroad car body being used as a chicken coop? And so there's a, a whole bunch of comments and they found them as pigeon roosts and pig pens and everything. But so far, nobody has actually found one of these being used as a chicken coop. And I don't think this, this is either one either. Although I think some kind of livestock is living in there. Yeah. Oh dear. Now this is car 1809 in the process of being turned into a cabin. And this one had a third life when it wound up being uh, purchased by Leo Malash for Excelsior and was brought back and was cosmetically restored and functioned as kind of the office and publicity center. And Bill, you probably know about this. Then they went to pick it up with a crane and broke its back and right. scrapped it. And I always wondered why it needed to be scrapped. Well, it was pretty, it was, uh, it was pretty uh, cockeyed after, after the back was broken. Um, and it wasn't in great shape. And it was one that some of us, <clears throat> some of us implored Leo not to, not to buy because it was just junk and we really didn't need it, but he wanted it. So he, he, had, okay. he had a vision of having three or four standard cars running at Excelsior. And we said, not realistic. Get one and be happy with it. Anyway, so that, it, it finally ended up, where did it end up? I don't know if it was one of the three cars that ended up in Bob Dulles's apple orchard or, or if it ended up somewhere else. I don't know. <clears throat> anyway. Well, the, is, is that the car that was at uh, uh, the uh, end, of, uh, end of the line at Water Street? No, not Water Street. It was, uh, well, okay, wait a minute. This thing was set down at Water Street and then it was moved to the opposite end of the line Right. And actually across Excelsior Boulevard. But yes, it was at Water Street for a while. Right, right. I remember seeing it there. I may, I may even have a, a slide of it there. So anyway, I think this is it when it was a cabin after they finished with it. I'm pretty sure this is it. I think, isn't that 1239? I don't know which one it is. I thought this was 1809, but I'm not sure. I think that's our 1239. Okay. Well, I'm not sure. Bill, because it looks like the uh, it's been uh, steel steel sheathed. Yeah, it's a steel yeah, side. Right. Okay, you're right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and so I'm not sure quite what has happened with this one. As you can see, he's got the seats piled out in front. Uh, oh, I think okay. I since these two photos are together, I think. Uh, Someone's living in it, and this is the inside. Charming. I like the face on the clock. And uh, here you see it's this one's got its fairground sign up. Oh, this one right here is the one that became the trolley church in South St. Paul. And this was before they can they put it together. But here it is with the organ up on the front platform. And then, the, so this is 1496 and we wound up, oh yeah, we wound up with this car. This car, we bought it after it was the trolley church and then we didn't need it. And so we sold it to the uh, Lake Superior Museum in Duluth and they just let it out, left it outside and let it deteriorate. And then Leo wanted it back. And so it came back, Leo bought it. And this is one that wound up in Dumas's yard and was eventually scrapped. It was in horrible condition. They left it outside with no windows in it in Duluth for maybe 10 years, a long time. It was just in terrible, terrible condition. What years was it a trolley church in South St. Paul? Well, it would have been uh, from like 1954 to 
I don't know, uh, the 60s sometimes, 70s. Wow. That's a beautiful. Do you know where, where in South St. Paul that was, Aaron? I don't. I don't. It's a beautiful order. Highway 53, uh, away from, uh, I can't remember that. Uh, anyway, it was, uh, well, I can't tell you where it was. I know where it was. Never mind. Never mind. Here's Jim's uh, streetcar used appliances. I like this one. <laughs> and if you buy one of those washing machines, you have to get it off the streetcar yourself. Now here's one that uh, you haven't seen, and I don't know where this was. It, it is a Twin City car. You can steal, see it's a steel side, but I have no idea where this was. But they sold like trolley this. burgers. Yes. Like the spelling of the word snack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is a guy who, not quite clear to me what he's doing. I think he's fixing it or something. It's out in the country. And this guy was apparently a shop man at uh, Twin City Lines, and he just wanted a streetcar. And here we are out at Ed and Ev's Resort in South Dakota. I guess you could stay in this one. It's got curtains. And here are the infamous rattlesnake cars out in Chamberlain, South Dakota that were moved out there. Somebody must have had an idea for a project, but nothing ever happened. What is the infamous, are the infamous rattlesnake cars? Well, it's like seven streetcars that were moved to Chamberlain, South Dakota, and then just sat there for many years. And whichever of our guys found it discovered that there were rattlesnakes in it, so they've been called the rattlesnake cars ever since. So anyway, here's the notice for Duluth. Uh, cheap, cost 8,000 to 14,000, make us an offer. Old streetcar slightly used. Slightly used. <laughs> And this is the rig that they, uh, how they would send them out. That's Duluth. This is Duluth. This is all Duluth here. <clears throat> so, come on. Uh, okay, so here's one, the, the Bluebird landing on the North Shore. A few of these became cabins along the North Shore. Homemade pies. Here's another one. That's the one that your dad was very interested in because he said he'd been in it and said it was in very, very good condition. Okay. Here's 265. Wow. Nice rounded roof. Yeah, you like yeah. that? Good protection. Sure. So two of the Woodies became the Trolley Cafe in Cromwell. This lasted a long time. I mean, you can see that's a very 70s car there. Is that the first double wide? <laughs> double long. <laughs> oh, yeah. And here's the, something called the Trolley Lunch. And this is uh, in Duluth, somewhere out on the West End. I think it's on Superior Street somewhere. Um, and here's one of their Birney cars. They had a half a dozen Birney cars. Any idea where that was? I do not know. And this is one of the Park Point cars that was then um, after Duluth bought, 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 pardon me, bought Park Point. Uh, they went and they fixed these up and ran them until 1931. And then, of course, here's 303 up in uh, Solon Springs. And there's Winona 11. I think it must have been fairly recently after it was uh, retired. It looks like it's on a truck. It's sitting a little low to be on a truck. I don't know. 
I, no, no, you can see, if you look carefully, you can see concrete, you can see blocks. Uh, and um, here's uh, St. Cloud 202, which made the last run in St. Cloud and supposedly was going to be kept as a history thing, but, or a Boy Scout project or something, but apparently it's long gone. And this was the one up in Grand Forks that was supposed to be a bicentennial project and also probably just never happened. This was taken in 1976 and it had been something, I don't know what. Wow. And this is the last shot. And uh, the caption on this, this is one of a series of views of the buses in the Snelling Yard. And the caption on this one says that this is the last car body being hauled away. <laughs> Now, I don't think that's right because I can see a couple others uh, over there, but it's still kind of an interesting contrast.